What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I fully disassembled the front suspension on my Honda Civic because I want to get all the suspension components powder coated. Now, in this video, I need to disassemble the front spindles. They're old, rusty, and I don't think they've ever been apart before. So I'm going to show some of the tips and tricks I use to get these things apart without stripping any bolts or breaking anything. Now, keep in mind, I'm not concerned about my hubs, bearings, or ball joints on these, even the brake dust shields I'm not concerned about. I'm going to be replacing all of these parts, so I'm pretty much going to be destroying them in the process of taking them off. I'm not going to be careful and use a press and all that kind of stuff. So keep that in mind. If you do want to keep all your parts intact and try to reuse them, you're going to have to be a lot more careful, and you're definitely going to have to use a press or at least some proper tools. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to be doing is taking this hub out. And I'm just using a hammer to take this hub out. You could definitely use a press for this. Um, you could even put a socket on the hub and hammer onto the socket in an attempt to not damage the hub as much. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube do that successfully. But since I'm not concerned about damaging the hub, and I'm not going to be reusing it anyway, I'm just pounding it out directly with the hammer because that's a lot easier than trying to balance the socket on there. And it, as you can see, it's not that hard. I don't think these hubs have ever been out, and it wasn't that hard to hammer it out. And as you can see, this hub is pretty rusty. I definitely wouldn't want to reuse this one, but hey, if, if yours is in better condition, then give a different method a try and go ahead and reuse it if you would like. And next I just pried this little dust shield out for the wheel bearing. This probably should have been taken out before I hammered out the hub, just in case I accidentally hit it with the hammer, but either way, it's easy to get out. You can just pry it out with a screwdriver, or in this case, I'm just using a chisel. Next, I'm going to be removing the three brake dust shield screws in order to remove the brake dust shield. These are pretty much stuck in there, and I'm just planning to use a lot of heat and an impact driver. So you'll see that in a few minutes if you're not sure what an impact driver is. Basically, it's a screwdriver, but you're able to hammer on the top of it, and when you hammer on it, it turns the screw just a little bit. So it makes it pretty much, I don't want to say impossible to strip the screw, but it makes it a lot harder to strip the screw. And in this case, I did not strip any of the screws, and with a lot of heat and the use of the impact driver, I was able to remove all three screws. I would say without the heat or the impact driver, they definitely would have all stripped. And you guys all know what happens when the screw strips. I would have had to drill it out and then retap the hole, and that would have taken me so much more time than just using the heat and the impact driver and being patient. So as you can see, it took quite a bit of hits with the impact driver to get this screw out. And the other two screws were even harder than this one. Some of them required multiple cycles of heat 
impact driving, heat impact driving, but with some patience, I was able to get them all out. The last one actually did end up stripping, and I had to grind it into a flathead screw because they're originally Phillips. I had to grind it into a flathead screw with my Dremel tool and then use the flathead attachment for the impact driver in order to get that one out. But luckily, it all worked out, and I didn't have to drill and tap any of the screws. Next, I decided to take out the lower ball joint, and I'm pretty sure this lower ball joint actually was replaced, so I was wrong before when I said nothing had been serviced before. I do remember replacing these with a Moog ball joint, and these actually have a snap ring installed. So make sure you check yours. They may or may not have a snap ring, but make sure you take that out before you try to remove the ball joint. So as you can see, my snap ring was kind of stuck, and I had to kind of hammer around a little bit and try two different snap ring pliers in order to actually get this thing out. And for the ball joint, I just elected to use the brute force method and hammer this thing out with a sledgehammer. There are tools for this. Maybe that would have been better, maybe it would have been worse. You could also use a press, but I'm not going to be reusing the ball joint, so I just decided to hammer it out. The next step is taking out this bearing. But before I can do that, I need to remove the bearing snap ring. And this is one of the more difficult parts because these snap rings are usually heavily seized into that slot where they sit. I'm going to just cut the snap ring to kind of relieve the tension on it. And that should be enough to get it out fairly easily. I also made the mistake of focusing the camera on the snap ring here to get a close up of it. So the rest of the video ended up being a little blurry. Sorry about that, it's pretty frustrating, but hopefully this will still be helpful for you guys. Here I'm just hammering directly on the snap ring to kind of break things loose a little bit. Next I was able to get the chisel on an angle and stick it directly in the hole of the snap ring and with a little bit of hammering, it broke right loose. Now on to the last step, removing the wheel bearing. So I have this wheel bearing removal tool, and I'll actually link it below. It has a huge variety of tools and parts to remove the wheel bearing, and it's meant to be used without even using a press. However, I am going to be using a press here, just because I have one available to me, and that's going to be a little bit easier than trying to wrestle around with the tool. Although I have seen people use the tool before, so if you're interested in that, I will drop a link in the description below. And first, I'm just sticking the spindle directly under the press just to break the bearing loose. And then I'll use one of the pipes from the toolkit I have in order to press the bearing fully out and into the pipe. So there we go, 
I've got my spindle fully disassembled, and now I can send it off to get powder coated. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out if you've been having trouble getting your spindles fully disassembled, or if you're interested in taking your spindles fully apart, this might be helpful. Anyway, can't wait to show you guys what these look like when they come back from the powder coater. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.